Good morning. I'm going to talk about our own humble origins from our mother's womb, how we became adults. It's a long journey. We started off like a zygote, that is one celled organism. And then we became blastocyst, that is multicellular organism. Then we became embryo, then our embryonic cells. The embryos have the power to produce different parts of the body, like liver, heart, intestine, eyes, nose, brain, so on and so forth. And then we became fetus. Fetus is fully grown human body. So becoming a fetus is like Homer's Odyssey. It's a long journey. The Greek poet Homer wrote Odyssey. It's a long journey. So the same kind of reflection can be brought in when we think about how we become a fetus. Eight days after conception, you were an embryo consisting of thousands of new stem cells governed by a genetic process that began assigning roles and job sites to areas that soon became your nervous system, digestive system, and other major physiological functions and anatomical structures. These embryonic stem cells were of the same type that are now being used in scientific research to generate specialized tissues for treating a wide range of diseases. Over the next few weeks, you went through more transformations than a contortionist in a traveling circus. Just 14 days after implantation, you looked a little like a plump frankfurter split at both ends. Between weeks three and four, the split ends of a vena close to form a shrimp-like brain and spine. The beginning of your nervous system. Between weeks four and five, your eyes, nose, and mouth began to emerge. Your spine curled around like a dragon's tail. And you resemble a strange prehistoric creature. In the 19th century, it was believed that during these first few weeks of life, the human organism recapitulated all the stages of evolution from sea life to amphibian to mammal. This isn't exactly what occurred. You didn't actually become a shrimp, a lizard, or a minuscule Jurassic Park monster, but you did share some of the same genetic codes as primitive vertebrates, which in these early embryonic stages made you resemble them to some degree. By week six, you looked like an alien from another planet with a large head and beady eyes. In another couple of weeks, the formation of your organs was complete and you had pretty much every physical structure found in a full-sized adult. At this point in your journey, you became officially known as a fetus. In Latin, fetus means bringing forth. Your spirit down soul may have been witnessing all these physical changes going on from its celestial realm. But it's around this time that the initial twinkling of a rudimentary body of consciousness may have begun. During the next few months of intra 
uterine life, you were like a scuba diver rolling around in a warm and comfy cushion of amniotic fluid at the temperature of about 99.5 Fahrenheit. You were enveloped in water. It's interesting to note that many of humanity's creation myths begin in water. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 2 says, In the beginning of creation, when God made heaven and earth, the earth was without form and void, with darkness over the face of the abyss, and a mighty wind that swept over the surface of waters. In the Babylonian creation epic, Apsu, a fresh water god, and Tiamat, a salt water god, represent the primeval waters at the beginning of time. Even the first Western philosopher, the Greek thinker Thales, suggested that the world originated from water, believing that the earth actually floated on the liquid stuff. Collective creation myths such as those found in the Bible and in other sacred and philosophical texts worldwide give us possibly the earliest chronicles of the actual collective memories of intrauterine existence as earthly body of awareness and celestial spirit down consciousness come together in a unified way. Thank you. Goodbye.